Before we set up our first study, we want to look at some of the options within simulation. These options are global, so once they are set, they will affect all new studies created. We go to the simulation menu, and then we go to options. Similar to SOLIDWORKS, we have two different tabs in the options. We have system options, and we have default options. Within the system options, we have a couple of settings that are very useful. The first one is right in the middle, and that's where we want to show our yield strength marker for von Mises stress plots. This is available for single parts. Another option that is nice when you are new to analysis is to run the simulation advisor from the command manager. This is a step-by-step -step wizard to help guide us through setting up our first study. Another option that helps to clear up or simplify the graphics is to hide the excluded bodies from any study. We can exclude bodies that we don't want uh, the analysis run on. We also have an option of loading the all of the simulation studies when we open the CAD model. This takes longer to initially open the model, but all of the study information is there uh, if we want to go between studies. Looking at the default options, the first is what units do we want the study to have? We have SI units, we have English units, and we have metric. We can also change the length and displacement to a non-standard unit. We can change temperature. We can change our angular velocity. And we can change our pressure and stress units. This allows us to create a combination of SI, English, and metric if that's what we need. Again, remember, these are global options that only affect new studies created, not old studies that we already have. This is also just the default unit when the study is created. Any individual input, such as a load, can have its units switched independently. The next item in the options are our symbols for our previews for our loads and our fixtures. We can move the slider for the default size. We can also set the color for a fixture, which is green by default, pressure is red, force is purple, etc., etc. We can also set it to preview all of the symbols by default, or we can turn that off, and individually we can turn the preview of fixtures and loads on within their menu. The next item is our mesh. This is where we set whether it defaults to the draft quality or first order element or high quality, which is the second order element. We have two different standard meshers we can use, curvature based or standard. The standard mesh gives us a uniform mesh size across the entire structure. The curvature based mesh looks for small curved features and it automatically refines the mesh in those areas. If we have the standard mesh turned on and we turn on an option for automatic transition, that does a similar mesh refinement as the curvature based does. Looks for small features that need refined mesh. We can also have the software automatically loop if the mesh fails, so automatic trials for solids. We can set the number of trials we're going to allow and what percent reduction we want from trial to trial. Another option that will become important in the assembly class, which is a, another class after this one, is to show the advanced options for contact sets. We can also have the mesh for a beam or shell render as the beam profile or the shell thickness. This will be covered in a future class on mixed mesh. The next item in the options are the results. And the first thing is what solver we want to use. The automatic solver will look at the structure and pick a solver for us. The direct sparse solver is typically used for assemblies with a large number of components interacting with one another. The FFE Plus is a faster solver for larger models. 
and the Intel Direct Sparse is for large assemblies, also with a lot of contacts or components interacting with each other. The results generated from the solver can go into the SOLIDWORKS document folder, can also be created with a subfolder, or they can be placed in a user-defined location such as a network location. A couple of options within plot are to show the minimum value and the maximum value. We also set the scale for our results. In the color chart, we can choose our number formatting, scientific, floating, or general. We can also determine the number of decimal places we want to show. And we can add a thousandth separator or the commas in our large results. And another option, if we know we are going to be above yield on our results, is to turn those results to a grayscale. For our default plots, we have each study type, so linear static stress, frequency and buckling, thermal, drop test, fatigue, optimization, and nonlinear. For each of those study types, we can create a set of plots that are generated every time. We are not limited to these plots as we can create as many additional plots as we need. The three default for static study is von Mises stress, resultant displacement, and equivalent strain. And remember, these options are global and they affect every new study that we create.